Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 36 of Whitlings. We are back into the thick of it. <clears throat> so, last time we got user input, debug user input drawing, where we can say, okay, these are the points that were dragged across. And so what I'd like to do today is calculate the average direction of that swipe and... Um, I'm not sure if I want to draw another debug thing on the screen from the center of the cube. I don't know how I feel about that. Ooh, that's another thing. Our tapping is still creating a single or maybe multiple uh, debug points here. So we also want to, let me write that down. So we're going to, oh, putting the mouse in front of the stylus is a bad idea. We're going to calculate the average delta. Which should be fairly straightforward. Um, maybe have a debug line. And then we also want to um, differentiate between tap and swipe. <clears throat> and this should be fairly straightforward too, you know. We have the start distance of this of a swipe and end distance. And if it's if the first and last are greater than some tunable amount, then we can determine, hey, this is a swipe or hey, this is a tap. However, that kind of makes me worried about our, where did we put that? Mouse controller. Most of our stuff should be in here, right? Where our mouse controller, touch input. I'm not a big fan of having those separate. Do I have a to-do in here? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, we've made a generic easing component. Um, <laughs> I don't really care too much about this anymore. So we'll mark this as ignored. And what did I want to do? I wanted to combine... Oops. Touch input and mouse controller. So I guess the first thing we want to do is here we do draw points. Oh, we already have the average. Um, So here we're looping through all of the touches. And this is actually the average point, not quite the average delta. <clears throat> so what I want to do, uh, let's rename this. I want to... So we've got, say, three test points, 0, 1, and 2. I want to take 0 to 1 and add it to 0 to 2 and then divide it by the number of items in the array. So 0 to 1, that's 1 minus 0. Actually, I want to subtract this by the number 0, 1, 2. So there's actually three items in here. So I want to do the, um, the length minus 1 of <clears throat> the number of deltas that we have, right? Let's see, is this going well? Yeah. 
So that's one minus zero, and originally, or I guess the first thing I would imagine to do is I touch plus one minus and we'll go until <clears throat> count minus one. And we'll divide by that. And let's normalize it. So I think this should be positive, positive. Nice. Really, this is normalized? Uh, let's just try something around straight up. Not bad. Straight down. This is like straight to the left. OK. <clears throat> So the average delta seems to be working correctly. We've got our normalized vector in our viewport space, or actually in pixel space, I guess is better. Um, let's get rid of this debug here. We really don't need it anymore. Let's test something a little bit stranger. Let's do like a squiggle to the right. Oh wow, perfectly even. That's real funny. That's so bizarre. 0 0.9, 0 0.5 does not seem normalized to me. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, okay, yeah, sure. This has got to be like a 0 0.85 and a 0 0.55 or something. Yeah, 0 0.86 and 0 0.54 or something. Just because the way it's printing, it's it's rounding it, which is making it look really unbalanced. So we have our average delta. That seems to be working fine. Cool. I'm not sure how much I f care about this debug line. I mean, we kind of already have these dots that are showing up. And that's good enough to visually parse what's happening. Yeah, I guess um, I'll do a question mark here. I don't know if I care about this too much. Let's uh, let's differentiate between tap and swipe. And so I think to differentiate, we are going to need to combine these two scripts. And it shouldn't be too hard. Because we only have an update function and some things in here. So instead of cutting, let's copy. <clears throat> yeah, 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 I know, I know. You're angry. Did I just copy? No, no, that should be fine. Mm. 
Okay. That should make it happy. So if touch delta count is greater than zero, So this should happen anytime we release the mouse, right? So let's say the travel distance. <laughs> Seems like we have a visitor again. Thunderbutt trying to put her cute face in, out in there in the world. Try and get a modeling job, maybe. I think she wants to be on the cover of cat food bags. She's got to lose some weight first. So let's see. Travel distance. This is going to be from... Uh, we'll do a vector 3 distance, and I'm going to do a full distance here. I'm okay with the... I'm going to eat the cost of the square root. So this would be touch deltas at 0, and touch deltas at touch deltas dot count minus 1. If travel distance is greater than min swipe distance, calculate swipe, else handle tap. And I think at the end of both of these, we're going to want to touch deltas dot clear. So let's see, we've got a void, calculate swipe. And this code is going to go in there. I do see I've got two clears there. No! Having a cat in front of your keyboard is hard mode. So we calculate the average delta in here, and we do some other stuff. And now we need to can't or to write. Let's explicitly mark this as private, just to keep good practice in there. Nice discipline. So a handle tap is going to be this, and instead of input mouse position, we are going to use, oh, I just realized touch deltas is a bad name. We got to rename that. This needs to be touch positions. <clears throat> Let's do a print handling tap. So the last thing we need to do is define and tune this min swipe distance. And you know what? Let's put a header here. Tuning. I'm going to say 100 pixels because I do believe that this is all still in pixel space. Travel distance. What? No way, what, what's going on here? Am I missing? 
That just must be a bad Visual Studio failure. No overload method for print. Oh, <laughs> wrong language. I've been doing Python and Lua in classes. So, travel distance zero, cool. I don't know why it printed out average delta. That should not be happening. Oh, because our min swipe distance is zero. Lol. Let's see, this lives in my core level objects, mouse controller. I didn't serialize that field. But we do need our debug touch here. And let's turn this off. Uh, we can get rid of this. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Serialize field. That was a tap. Travel distance 63. Okay. Mm, let's let's lower that quite a bit. Let's put this to 50. That seems like a okay. 42, um, hey, no cleaning on the desk, Thunderbutt, you know that. <clears throat> nice guest appearance. Um, 50 seems fine. We can tune that more later. Hmm. So what's next on the agenda? I guess what I could do is I find that shower thinking is always really good. Um, a lot of good ideas find me in there. Inspiration particles, as Terry Pratchett would say. So, still a couple flaws with my ideas, but maybe writing it out and talking out loud will help. So, we got our buddy cube. I think I'll probably be very good at drawing cubes by the end of this. Um, and technically, we've got two... Um, two planes in which we would want to be testing for, right? Um, so, let's see. Obviously, the plane we test against will depend on um, camera up-down. And then let's see, with that, essentially what we can do is we can throw out four of the eight vertices. So in our case, we'll say that the light blue one is the one on top relative to the camera. So that means we've got four vertices. And with that, we can create four lines. We'll just say four verts on side of plane. And we can use that to unproject the points.
and create four, uh, we'll call these edges. So we've got this cube here. And we can average the four points to get the center. We can use the line that the user drew line B um, and we can do four line to line tests against this one this one this one and this one and that will let us know which edge the code has detected the swipe to go through. Now, what happens if somebody does this? I have no idea. <laughs> right? Um, I feel like we've got a couple options. We could say, we could shorten these lines, right? So instead of going from point to point, they could just be like offset a little bit inside. So if a user does a goofy swipe like this, then it actually doesn't cross any of the four edge lines. I think that that might be a good idea. Average form center. Um, so let's say we'll shorten the edges. to throw out, to ignore, to invalidate, confusing swipes. And that would be near two edges. <clears throat> so the size of that would also be tunable, I think. That'll be a nice, easy thing to tune. So once we know the line that the um, that the swipe has crossed. Oh. I don't know how that happened. So our edge is going to need um Well, it's obvious going to need a start and an end. But it's also, we're also going to want a, I don't know, collider start, collider end. Because my idea is start and end are going to be these two yellow dots here. <laughs> and so... If I know that I have crossed this line here, that means I have the cube center point. I 
and I can draw a line from the cube center point to the average of the edge. And in theory, Let's write this out, so I'm not writing it down, I'm throwing it on the ground. So I get a line to the center of the edge, and what I feel like I could do, and I'm sort of in, I've done a lot of stuff without testing it, this is all theoretical. Um, I can zero out the Y component. So that would actually give me, because this one, if you imagine it in 3D space, it's going to be an angle upwards towards that edge. And if I zero out the Y component, that is just going to give me an X and a Z direction. And that is the direction that I want to spin the cube. <clears throat> So at this point, we have our spin direction. And we just need to um, to calculate a perpendicular vector with the cross product. And I believe this will insert right back into our code that we currently have, where we just say, hey, I want you to rotate 90 degrees around this axis. Okay, let's give it a shot. Um, so depending on camera up down, where where do we want to put this? So now we have a theoretical plan, a battle plan. And this is our mouse controller. We've got our swipe. <laughs> okay. So we could pass it off to some other class whose job it is is to test swipe edges. Maybe that's what touch input could do. Still not a very good name. Maybe we need a better name. So what would I like the code to look like? So we've got our average delta, and I want to say some cube controller dot test swipe. And that will take our average delta and Um, the vector 3 distance between the first and the last one. And I'm doing this twice, so int touch count. Thank <laughs> you. 
three times. I noticed that all three of these have a minus one here, but I think I'm going to leave the minus one because touch count implies this is how many touches were put into the list. Does our mouse controller talk to our cube controller? <clears throat> cube selector. Does every cube have a cube controller? It does. Oh dear. But I do have a reference to the cube selector. And we do have a currently selected. So we'll write an accessor for this, return currently selected, a eh? selectable, Ooh. Ooh. so I made that sound because I do believe that, I don't know, will whittlings be selectable in the future? Um, so let's not make this a single inline. So we'll get this and we'll say if not controller. That's not C sharp acceptable, is it? Oh, it is. Nice. If not controller, uh, debug log error. We are trying to get a controller from a selectable object that does not have one. And we're going to need to specify this and say cube controller. Just a little bit of defensive programming there. <clears throat> so, cube controller get currently selected. Touch inputs. This is pretty much DED. So we get the currently selected, that is our currently selected cube controller, and we can create a public void test swipe. And this is going to take in a vector 3 direction and a float distance. We might also want a start position as well. Ah, uh, no, we can calculate the start position, right? Remember, the start position is A. That's the average four points on the valid face. So one of the downsides about this setup is that um, this will only work on top and bottom of cube. I think that's acceptable for now. Eventually it would be cool to like, you know, here's a side of the cube and you select here and then spin it upwards. That would be pretty neat. But, and it would be totally doable. We could, um, because really what we're doing is we're constructing a face here and then we're building a ray from the center of that face outwards. And then we find the two, we find the edge at which those two collide, and we know we want to rotate from this position and spin it 
up this direction. So it's doable. But we'll stick with this version for now. I think I like it a lot. <clears throat> oh boy. Cube controller needs... Do we have a camera? We have our camera offset transform. Okay, and this would be up. Um, let's run this and let's flip the world. And now this is down. Okay, <clears throat> excellent. So with this, we can find the four corners. So let's comment this. Find four corners of the cube that are in the same direction as the camera transform up. So remember, up's just a vector. And we can use a dot product to be like, hey, draw a line from here to here. And if we dot these two together and it's greater than zero, then we know they're pointing in the same direction. So now we need access to the verts of the cube. Got a box collider. That probably has the verts inside of it. We do have a mesh renderer, but I don't want to use the mesh renderer because eventually I might want to have beveled edges on the cubes, and that would break this logic. So it seems like Vox Collider is the way to go. So we'll get the box collider. We could probably cache this. We're going to be testing swipes a lot. And since we're caching it, we'll give it a better name. In awake. There we go. I'm going to hide this update. Hmm. Box Collider. I guess we have a bounds at a center. What does bounds get us? Center and extents. Got a min and max, intersects, don't care about that, contains, closest point, nope. <clears throat> We've got a center and we've got some extents. I'm just going to calculate this every time. Um, it's going to be like eight vector additions, nothing too bad. I could cache it, but yeah, we'll cache it if we have to eventually. But for now, I'm just going to do it. So let's see. I'll do this. Well, hold on. Let's double check. Um, let's see. C sharp box collider verts. Maybe there's an easier way. 
No. Mm, max Collider points. No. Get vertices of Box Collider. There we go. Bounds center over bounds extents. Two thousand eleven. Yeah, we are going to have to do this sort of negative positive dance, aren't we? Local to world matrix. So we're going to have a list of vector 3 verts. Can I just do an inline assignment like this? No. There we go. And I do believe that we need to calculate the center. Let's double check that. I'm going to move this to x4. An element initializer cannot be empty. Right. <laughs> We never call this function test. Oh, we never. S What's the past tense of swipe? Swap. Oh. Right, no cube was selected. Okay. Oh. You're trying to get a cube controller from a selectable object that does not have one. Oh, shoot. This is the selectable. Where's the controller? The cube controller's up here. What a silly move. Um... Oh, hey, that's not what I wanted. There we go. <clears throat> so let's just have our mouse controller have a reference to the cube controller. Keep everything nice. Do, 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 do. I think we're running out of time. Oh no, we got 15 minutes left. Solid. 
So our mouse controller cares about our cube controller now. Cool. And our code can call test swipe. There is no box collider attached to cube controller. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I got my wires all crossed here. Cube controller. So here's a selected cube transform. That's what we want. Cool. I'm really curious why there's 393 messages. I don't feel too great about that. Hmm. Okay. So the center is 400. Zero zero. Then we don't need to add the transform position here. What don't you like about this? Oh boy, I have to do a new vector 3 here, don't I? Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, extra little bit of space, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll say that these ones are our top ones. And I guess I'm doing a lot of extra work here that's not quite too necessary. Like, I could just say, okay, um, I know the camera's above or I know the camera's below, and give me those four things. But let's do it right. Just in case we need to use this later. So plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus. That's how I roll. Other people might have different patterns. So we've got all of our verts. So we create our vert or collider vert list. Throw out verts that are not in the same direction as camera transform up. I'm going to say while verts dot count is greater than four. So we need to do a dot product from the center of the cube to the vert. Which is literally just subtracting the center <laughs> I think it's called theta. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know. I think the dot product between two vectors returns a theta, which is a little circle with the curly q on it. But I could be wrong. 
So let's see, vector three dot, I know I want to dot from the center of the cube to this vert. So verts at vert index minus center. And I am going to dot that with camera offset transform dot up. And I'll say if theta is less than zero, um, verts dot remove at vert index, else plus plus vert index. So we only increment if we don't remove something. Because remember, when you remove something from a vector, everything slides down, and we want to test all of the verts in our list that we just built. So let's just give this a shot. Nice, so we got all of these at 0.5. Let's spin the world around. Four of them at negative 0.5. <clears throat> Excellent, and it should work. Four of them at negative 0.5. Yep, no matter where we spin, we're always getting the same verts, which is good. That is what I want. So we've got our four verts. Um, now I guess we need to build our edges. Who's gonna control this class? It could be a private class. This is in the cube controller though. Yeah, that's fine. Um, let's call this unprojected cube edge. And I'm using a class because I want to have references, although there are only vector threes in here, so... begin and end. Those really don't matter too much. Public vector 3. Um, collision line begin. Ooh. Wait, do I have a line? No, I don't. Make another tunable header. And let's actually make this a range. This will be a private float um, collider line ratio percentage. So I have my original line, which are the two edges or the two verts that create the edge. And then I shrink it by some amount in order to get a valid collision line to test against. So collider line relative size. And this is not the best name, so we'll give it a tooltip. We'll say 
a value of 1 means the collider, the test line, is the same size as the edge. A value of 0 0.5 means it is half size of the edge. I'm not sure if you have seen this, but you can stack uh, property drawers. I think they're called property drawers. Um, let's double check that. Where does this live? Cube controller. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> so we're definitely going to want to draw these lines. 100%. And we're starting to run out of time. <clears throat> ah, you know what? We're pretty much out of time. So let's call it here. Um, we were able to get a fair bit done. <clears throat> Our next few steps are we're going to need to unproject and create the four edges. Um, we've got the variables to shorten the edges. The logic should be fairly straightforward. Um, and then we'll need to do a line-to-line -line test, and I think we're going to have to write that ourselves. In fact, I think what I'll probably do is I'm going to steal my line-to-line -line test that I used in a previous project. But <clears throat> that's it for me today. My name is Billy Graben. Thanks so much for coming, and I'll see you tomorrow.